We are in section 20.7, the past transform. Now we are in the second half, talk about um, the inverse transform. Um, actually, it's just introducing that um, there's a one and one correspondence between the past transform and its uh, inverse transform. So the, the notation, so, the past transform of a function capital F T, and we define it as a little F S. Okay, and then uh, the notation of inverse transform will be L uh, to the minus one power, and this little F S that will give you the original function f, capital F, t. Okay, um, so far it's a uh, notation, but this implicitly assume that uh, there's a unique corresponding. So if you have do a transform and get f, then the inverse will get, give you back capital F. And there's a discussion that uh, there's some subtlety if, um, the inverse transform can be different from the original function by a, a finite number of uh, isolated points um, the value which means that the function will not be continuous and that becomes uh, possible but uh, usually when we do a physics problem that would not be the case so we usually will assume that uh, uh, when you look up the inverse transform, you will get back to original function. So uh, there's several way to do a inverse transform, and for now, is uh, the way is simply by looking up table. And in the textbook, uh, table twenty point one has a list of free transform. This is a rather incomplete list. They are much more comprehensive list in mathematical handbooks but anyway so the way to do it is just uh, uh, if you know that look up when you look up a table you can either look up the function f the capital f and get the the, the past run from uh, in a function s or vice versa you can look up a function in s and get the inverse transform as a function of t so now so you can do it both ways. But uh, one thing uh, need to be careful is that uh, the Laplace transform is different from the Fourier transform in the sense that the Fourier transform has a rather, a rather symmetric between the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. But the Laplace transform is not, so uh, uh, you cannot get it uh, in the uh, reverse order, let's just like uh, uh, the Laplace transform, so to speak, of the Laplace transform will not give you back the original function. So that uh, a little bit uh, careful about that. So, all right. So uh, the rest is some example. So the first example is rather trivial. Just. Uh, just to indicate what it means by looking up the table. So example 20.7.2. So now the the past transform is given. This is k square over s times s square plus k square. Okay, so and in this situation, you the most likely you want to do is to separate it into uh, different terms. So one would be uh, have a denominator s, the other would be have a denominator s square plus k square. Okay, and now you do the common denominator. You, you want to get back to k, k square in the denominator. So, uh, so when you do the 
common denominator s squared plus k squared would be multiplied to here and then uh, s will multiply by here but then you want to cancel the uh, cancel the s squared and get the k squared out so uh, pretty sure you will need the s in here so you multiply by s will give you s and then uh, you want to change this to negative sign so that you will subtract that so you have s squared plus k squared and then minus s times s will cancel the s squared and give you just the k squared all right so you can uh, get that uh, expression so it's got a, this is the so-called partial fraction method but anyway so uh, 1 over s and s over s squared plus k squared last time we actually did uh, examples for that but uh, if you, you forgot uh, about that then uh, you can look up the table 20.1 so if you look at 1 over s then the inverse Fourier transform will be 1 and then uh, s over s squared plus k squared will give you a cosine kt so this means that the, the inverse Fourier transform of fs or in this case uh, will be divided as capital ft would be the first one would be 1 the uh, and then you have minus the second one is cosine of kt cosine of k times t so that would be the inverse Fourier transform so okay so that kind of uh, straightforward all right so the next one example 20.7.3 is slightly more complicated you're actually using the Laplace transform and inverse transform to evaluate an integral and the integral actually is not difficult actually write down the integral f this function is defined by integration sine t times x over x dx okay so uh this kind of in integral we, we have we know how to do it we um we learned how to do it in chapter 11 uh, in the complex variable chapter so but uh now we are using the laplace transform method to uh, do that so what we will do is uh find the laplace transform of this function so f of s will be so integrating zero to infinity e to the minus st multiplied by f capital f which is integrating zero to infinity and sine t times x over x dx and then dt okay so and now we can now uh, reverse the order of the uh, integration so now we reverse that so put the dx integration out and then uh, you have a one over x here and then integrating e to the minus st sine t times x and D, dt okay so and now we already did something like that yeah last time we have a sine kt if you remember the um, the free transform this is like a laplace transform of sine uh, a sine function with something times t we did that uh, the past transform you look at the table this is a uh, sign which is number nine okay sine kt 
instead but uh, we have sine xt instead of sine kd so that means uh, we have dx over x and then copy that number nine will be k over s squared, s squared plus k squared now is x so we have x over s squared plus x squared so you cancel the x x answer the x here so that's integrating to this integral becomes s squared plus x squared okay so um, this integral is actually um, not difficult to evaluate um, Actually, if, um, you can use the same method to calculate the original function, but then uh, we, um, uh, in, you, you can of, of course uh, do a trans, uh, change a variable like in the textbook and get the cotangent function out, or up, yeah, like cotangent in arc tangent, um, meaning tangent inverse tangent function out. Uh, but uh, another way to do it is uh, just use a simple, uh, simple to, uh, contour integral because this the integral is just x plus i r s times x minus i s. So you have i s and minus i s, and this integral is symmetric with respect to x. So you can integrate the whole x axis and uh, close it by a semicircle and get only the residue, one of the residue. So you get the is residue. So altogether it's two pi i times actually divided by x plus is, but uh, with x change the is to so two is. Okay, so so two i cancel would be pi i, but you divide it by two because this is a uh, this is just integrating zero to infinity. You, if you integrate from negative infinity to infinity divided by two, so altogether as uh, you cancel the i, cancel the two, so it become pi over two. Okay, so and, uh, the pi over two s because uh, you this x x plus i s. So the is is not cancelled. Okay, so uh, this is not working. I get this one it's just frozen. All right, so uh, so I guess uh, we'll need to continue the, in a moment or in another video. Okay, now it's working too. So. I don't know. The computer just frozen for a minute, but anyway, so uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so pi over two s. So now with uh, the Laplace transform, you know, then you can calculate the inverse free transform. You get f t. So this implied f as a function of t equals to. Uh, just look up the table, if one over s, if the Laplace transform is one over s, that's number two, then the f is just one, so this f of t is still pi over two. Of course, uh, in this transform, we already assume that we integrate from zero to infinity, so this is for, for t, greater than zero because in a Laplace transform we define it that way so we only get the positive part 
because uh, we integrate f t from zero to infinity in this uh, in the free in the Laplace transform. So, but then we go back to the original function defined by this integral. We know that this is a odd function of um, of t. So this means that uh, rho equals to minus pi over two for t less than zero. Okay, and of course. Uh, when the original integram, when t equals is zero, the whole thing is zero. So we can kind of uh, just add that together, zero for t equals to zero. Okay, so that's the original, uh, that's the value of this integral uh, of this function f t. And you can write it down uh, using the step function language also, but uh, we don't have to do that. We can just settle with this kind of description. Okay, so uh, this is one way to do the integral, although, of, although this example is kind of a little trivial because this original integral is uh, not difficult to evaluate using the complex contour method also. But uh, anyway, that's... Uh, is serve as an example how to use the Laplace transform method to evaluate integral.